Greetings everyone, my name is Pado and today I want to show you step by step on how to make DBMC run better on PC and significantly improve your netplay experience along the way. All settings and software will be linked in a small zip file I have down in the description. I won't try to keep you here for too long, so let's just get down to it. Step number one, controller support. First things first. To ensure that the widest amount of controllers is supported in-game by default, always make sure to have the right settings beforehand. You can tweak this by just hitting the Steam, Settings, Controller, and General Controller settings. Once there, a window will pop up. You want to make sure that all configuration support options are enabled. To test this out in game, head to several game stage in the lobby and take a look at it in local battle mode, since training won't let the players enter by default. I have tested this with a big variety of bats, from DS4s to literal Nintendo Switch controllers, and I can confirm that they have all worked fine on my end once the steps listed have been applied. If you're in a situation where you need to swap player one side constantly for like, say, an airplay station that has people physically close to you involved. The solution is also quite straightforward. To get started, you'll want to launch Steam on Big Picture mode. From there, open DBFC. After you have set up your controllers, do the keyboard shortcut of Shift plus Tab. This will open the overlay. You can use the mouse to navigate these settings. Click on controller options and then rearrange controller order. From there, just click on the up arrow icon for the device you want to assign as player 1 and then hit OK. After that, close the overlay and go back to the game. Big Picture supports up to 4 controllers and you can rearrange this order as many times as you want. Do keep in mind, however, that you will always need to have a device plugged in to be player 1. If you disconnect all of your controllers and plug them back in, the game won't be able to recognize them until you restart it. Step number 2. Afterburner and Rivet Tuner. By default, the game has a form of V-Sync on, which helps stabilize frame time and mitigate tearing on the screen. This does, however, introduce a very perceivable amount of input lag, even though the game will still run faster than its PS4 counterpart as it is. When turning V-Sync off, we will be able to share as much input lag in-game as possible. However, the frame time values do not respond well to these changes, leading to an increase in input stability and even microstuttering issues within the game. As you can see watching these two clips side by side, even though the game feels considerably snappier with V-Sync off, my frame time numbers are jumping all over the place, and it's not being able to smooth out this experience at all. The way we can remediate this is by manually capping the frame rate through River Tuner and keeping track of it while we play, using MSI Afterburner. To do this, we will download both Afterburner and River Tuner as they come bundled in. Once you have installed the software, open both Afterburner and River Tuner from the Start menu and click on the little gear icon that's shown below the fan speed slider. Then, you want to go to Monitoring and scroll down until you find both Frame Rate and Frame Timer. Click on the tick icon right next to these two and make sure to also click on Showing on Screen Display for both of them. Now, open DBFC on your PC and Alt-Tab. From your system tray, click on the blue 16 icon that's found within it. This will open Rivet Tuner. Make sure the show on screen display is on. 
left click on the big green add button while holding down the left control key. Select the red dash win 64 dash shimpy.x profile and click OK. After that, set the frame rate limit to 60 and go back to the game to see if your stats are being displayed and if the injection works. Step number 3 AMD Anti Lag slash NVIDIA Ultra Low Latency Mode. Even though River Tuner will help us stabilize the frame time with VSync off, it will still introduce an extra frame of input delay, as it is an external solution. For those who are interested in further reducing the in game delay, there exist built in driver features from both AMD and NVIDIA for the respective GPU software suits that can help mitigate this. I'm an AMD user so I can only show how I do it on my end. For NVIDIA users, I will be linking down a step-by-step -step guide in both the zip file and the description. Luckily for us AMD folks, this is very straightforward. Just open up the game and toggle the AMD Reliable Toolbar with the keyboard shortcut of Alt plus C. Then, Move your mouse to where it says Radeon Anti-Lag and turn it on. Now, go ahead and see how it feels for yourself. Having these settings on, 4 frames of stable netplay delay will more or less be the same as what you get on offline PS4, while also ensuring the frame time values are in check. Step number 4. EAC Fix. Okay. This fix is a bit more intimidating, as it requires to tweak with the registry, but realistically speaking, it is nothing to worry about. Before I go over it, I would like to credit fellow player Rogue Yoshi, as he was the first person to post about this back in March of this year. DBFC on PC has an anti cheat software that's required to be used so we can play online. Of course, there's nothing inherently wrong about that. However, by default, this solution will take up way more CPU processing than needed, and also prevents the system to allocate more resources to the game itself. First, search for Regedy in the Start menu, and open it. Copy and paste the address being shown right at the top bar. Again, I'll have all of this linked in the description. Right click on the folder and create the new key called red-win64-simping.x After having done this, right click on this new folder and create a new key called perf options. Once you have done this, click on this perf options folder and create a new 32-bit DWORL file called CPU Priority Class. Now, double click on this new file you have created and change the value data to 3. With this, you should be good to go. Step number 5. Tweaking with your graphical settings. This goes without saying, but if you want to ensure an optimal experience for not just us, but anyone else we are playing with, we need to be able to run the game at a consistent 16 frames per second. And no, running it at an uneven frame rate is not the same at all. This target is there for a reason. The dips and slowdowns you experience in-game will affect the other players then as well when playing online. Tracking your game's performance and ensuring we are on equal foot is essential for a stable netplay experience. Now, you don't need to literally make your game look like a potato. If you have the hardware for it, you can still have this game be pretty while retaining a stable frame rate. It's not like the PC port of this game is very demanding, if at all. Everyone's configuration is different, 
so I won't tell you what to touch exactly. I do suggest, however, to always have post processing set to low, as it can slightly help with input delay and looking into the shadows and anti aliasing options. Those last two tend to be some of the most demanding graphical settings for PC games. Step number 6 Optimal Network Configuration and Buffer Load. This is the most complex topic here, so for the sake of this video, I'll try to be as concise as possible. There are three things that matter the most when it comes to netplay ping, jitter, and latency. When addressing jitter in fighting games, the best solution tends to be to just wire up, period, buy an Ethernet cord and have at it. But that's not exactly where the story ends. Network congestion and buffer load can also be hugely detrimental to our netplay experience. In very simple terms, buffer load is latency introduced by excess buffering in networking equipment. Although buffers aren't necessarily a bad thing and can help maximize throughput, they can also introduce latency and reduce the performance of applications that are sensitive to it, such as online games. To test how good or bad it is on your end, a straightforward way to find out is by heading to dslreports.com slash speedtest, selecting your type of connection, and starting the test. What you will want to be concerned about here is your buffer load rate. If you score with anything below of a B, you may want to take a closer look at your current setup. If you're living with other people who use up your internet, one way to address this is by tweaking with your router settings, either enabling something called QoS or manually capping the internet output of everyone that's in the network. First, go to the start menu and search for CMD. Once you have opened it, type in the command ipconfig. Then, you'll want to copy and paste the default gateway address to your web browser. From there, you will most likely find out your router's model and tweak with its settings. Unfortunately, everyone's network hardware and configuration is different, so I cannot tell you where to find these settings, or assure you they're even supported on your end to begin with. In that regard, you will be on your own. If you're like me and don't own a router that has these features readily available, you can at least manually cap your own network output via software. One program I like using for this is NetLimiter 4. As you can see by these results, with just doing this alone, my buffalo grades have massively improved, going from a literal F to an A+, and my ping values have shown to barely fluctuate as well, even under the highest low. Of course, this won't avoid instances where your network is being congested by the people who live with you, which is where buffalo load is a bigger issue but it can at least help mitigate potential fluctuations that occur within your end. Before I tell you how to set this up, I must clarify that this is paid software with a 30-day free trial. You can purchase a full license for $30 on their website. I won't be showing a working serial key in this video. You will either have got to Google it, or if you're nice enough, ask me via DM on Twitter for a potential workaround. Anyway, to get started, We'll want to install NetLimiter 4 on our PC. After we are done, open it and make sure that all the top right boxes are turned on. Then, click on the little gear icon that's shown below the activity tab. Proceed to toggle both DL limit and UL limit on. Click apply. Head to your network tab and begin to tweak the speeds to your liking. You will want to take into account the download and upload numbers that you got in your internet test. These values are usually displayed as megabits, so you will want to select such unit when making the conversion. From there, the values you assign are up to you and the behavior of your internet. I personally prefer capping my download by less than half its speed, but giving the upload some more headroom and reducing it by only around 10 or 20%. Everyone's connection is different though, so what works for me won't necessarily work for you. In any case, you can just change this on the fly and see what numbers give you the best results on the test itself. This has pretty much been it for me. With the exception of the EAC fix, 
all of these tips and sayings can be potentially applied to our fighting games as well. So don't fret on sharing this to circles outside of the VFC. I haven't really done much with the channel as I originally promised, but I'm trying to work on it now. Next up will be a Gogeta guy, which I plan on making much more extensive than anything you may have seen before. If you want to keep tabs on that and potential future content, consider subscribing here if you haven't already, and following me on social media. You can also hit me up there if you run into any issues with the information provided. Thanks for watching, let us meet another time. On uh, Saturday this week, guys. So if you want to check that out, please do so. You can see the time right there. Uh, let's look at the next region, which was Japan. Okay. It's the most raggy country. <laughs> I thought every, every, I, I thought I thought everyone I thought everybody said that uh, Japan connection is really really good. <laughs> we play at PS4. Ah, uh, true. Yeah. PlayStation 4. Yes. No, no PC. Yeah, we want to play PC. Oh, I know. 